Hi, we're going to be looking at gas-powered cycles, more specifically the auto cycle. The problem statement we're given is a four-stroke, four-cylinder gasoline engine running at 2,000 RPM has a compression ratio of 10. The total displacement volume is 2.5 liters. They tell us air enters at a pressure of 70 kPa and a temperature of 280 degrees Kelvin. Uh, they tell us that heat is added, or 1800 kilojoules per kilogram of heat is added per cycle through the combustion process. They want us to determine the power produced by the engine. They give us uh, the value of gamma, CV, and R. So first thing we're going to draw is our TS diagram for an auto cycle. And it looks something like this. So we're going to call this point 1. We isentropically compress to point 2. We then add heat to point 3. Isentropically expand to point 4. And go back to point 1. So we have work in, work out, Q in, and Q out. On our PV diagram, it looks something like this. We have compression from 1 to 2, then constant volume heat addition from 2 to 3, expansion, and constant volume heat removal. So this is point 1. We're compressing to point 2, point 3, and back to point 4, or to point 4, back to point 1. So we can say that from 1 to 2, our entropy, or delta S, is equal to zero. From two to three, our specific volume is going to be constant. From three to four, our entropy is once again constant, or delta S is equal to zero. And from four back to one, our specific volume is constant. Let's look at what was given. They tell us that our RPM is 2,000. That means that our N is equal to 2,000 revs per minute. They tell us that the compression ratio R is equal to 10. That means that our ratio between minimum volume and maximum volume are, is equal to 10. They then go on to tell us that our displaced volume is 2.4 liters. So our volume displaced is going to be equal to 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3 meters cubed. They tell us that air enters at 70 kPa and 280 degrees K. That means our P1 is 70 kPa and our T1 is 280 Kelvin. They also tell us that heat is added as 1,800 kilojoules per kilogram for every cycle. Our Q in is going to be 1,800 kilojoules per kilogram. They also give us gamma, or K, equal to 1.4. They say that CV is equal to 0 0.717 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And they tell us R is equal to 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. They're asking us to find the power produced by this cycle. We can say that the power produced is going to be equal to the mean effective pressure times our volume displaced times our number of cycles per second divided by our number of revolutions per power stroke. So this is volume displaced. This here is in revolutions per second, and this here is number of revolutions per power stroke. In order to find our mean effective pressure, we say that mean effective pressure is equal to our work net divided by our specific volume at state 1 minus our specific volume at state 2. We can say that work net is equal to work out minus work in, and this is going to be equal to Q in minus Q out. 
So it's the area under the curve, whether we find it like this or like this, it ends up being the same. And we can say that Q in minus Q out is going to be equal to CV T3 minus T2 minus CV T4 minus T1. We already have the value for T1. We're going to need to find the value for T4, T2, and T3. So in order to solve for our different temperatures, we remember that from 1 to 2, we have an isentropic process. So we can write that the ratio of T2 over T1 is equal to the specific volume of 1 over the specific volume of 2 to the power k minus 1. If we isolate for T2, we get T1 times the specific volume of 1 over the specific volume of 2 to the k minus 1 is equal to T2. And we can remember that the maximum volume divided by the minimum volume is equal to our compression ratio, R. So we get T1 times R to the k minus 1 is going to be equal to T2. It's important to note that T1 here has to be in, degree, in Kelvin. So we get T2 is going to be equal to 280 times 10 to the 1.4 minus 1. And this gives us a value of 703.33 Kelvin. From 2 to 3, we have heat addition. We said that Q in was equal to CV T3 minus T2. We're given the value of Q in to be 1,800 kilojoules per kilogram. So we get T3 is going to be equal to Q in divided by CV plus T2. This tells us that T3 is equal to 1,800 divided by 0.717 plus 703.33. And this gives us a value of 3,213.79 Kelvin. From 3 to 4, we once again have an isentropic process. So we can write that the temperature at 4 divided by the temperature at 3 is going to be the specific volume of 3 divided by the specific volume of 4 to the k minus 1. We isolate for T4, we get that T4 is equal to T3, specific volume at 3 over specific volume at 4 to the k minus 1. Now, if we remember, T4, uh, sorry, the volume, specific volume at 3 is going to be equal to the specific volume at 2. The specific volume at 1 is going to be equal to the specific volume at 4. So we can rewrite this as T3 times 1 over the compression ratio to the k minus 1. So we get that T4 is equal to 3,213.79 times 1 over 10 to the 1.4 minus 1. And this gives us a value of 1,279.43 Kelvin. Now that we have all our temperatures, we can solve for our work net. We said that work net was equal to the work in minus the work out. And we said that this was equal to Q in minus Q out. And we said that this was equal to CV T3 minus T2 minus CV T4 minus T1. So we get this is equal to 0 0.717 times 3,213.79 minus 703.33 minus 0 0.717 times 1,279.43 minus 280. And this gives us a work net equal to 1,083.41 kilojoules per kilogram. There's actually a way of solving for the work net without needing our different temperatures. We can remember that our thermal efficiency is equal to our work net divided by Q in, and Q in is given. So we can isolate for work net and say that work net is equal to our thermal efficiency times Q in. The only problem is here, we don't have our thermal efficiency. But we know that for an auto cycle, we can write thermal efficiency is equal to 1 minus 1 divided by the compression ratio to the power K minus 1. With this, we can say that our work net is going to be equal to 1,800 times 1 minus 1 divided by 10 to the 1.4 minus 1. And this gives us a work net of 
you guessed it, 1,083.41 kilojoules per kilogram. Now that we've solved for work net in two ways, and the two different ways agree with each other, we can confidently solve for our power output. We said that our power output was equal to our mean effective pressure times our volume displaced times n in revolutions per second times our number of revolutions per power stroke. We say that n is equal to 2,000 divided by 60, and this is going to give us revs per second. And because it's an auto cycle, our number of revolutions per power stroke is equal to 2. We also said that our mean effective pressure was equal to our work net divided by our specific volume at 1 minus our specific volume at 2. We can rewrite this as work net divided by specific volume at 1 times 1 minus 1 over the compression ratio. In order to find our specific volume at 1, we can say our specific volume at 1 is going to be equal to R T1 over P1 from our ideal gas law. So armed with all this information, we can rewrite that our power output is equal to our work net divided by R T1 over P1, which is our specific volume at 1, 1 minus 1 over the compression ratio. That gives us our mean effective pressure times our volume displaced our number of revolutions in seconds times our number of revolutions per power stroke. This gives us 1,083.41 times 2.5, sorry, 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3 times 2,000 divided by 60 divided by 0 0.287 times 280 divided by 70 times 1 minus 1 over 10, and then times 2. This gives us a power output of 43.7 kilowatts.